Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, episode 212. Hi, I'm your host, Jacob Ayers. Thanks so much for tuning in to yet another episode. I'm so glad you're here. Well, hey, today it's just going to be you and I for a little bit of a short segment here. And I want to talk to you about creating your own story. Now, first, let's kind of back up. Do you remember when you were a kid what you wanted to be when you grew up? For me, first, I wanted to be a truck driver. Then, it was a bull rider. I wore boots, jeans, and a cowboy hat to preschool, kindergarten, and well throughout elementary school. And for being honest, probably much later than that, but... Anyways, I held my own real-life rodeos with the help of my dog at the time, and then after that, it was an astronaut. I had a poster of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins from the 1969 Apollo 11 space flight and moon landing hanging in my room. I also wanted to be a veterinarian and an anesthesiologist, and then eventually even President of the United States, just to name a few more. Luckily now, my parents, like so many others, encouraged me to do and be whatever I wanted. When we are young, we are encouraged to explore, learn new things, and be creative. But eventually that freedom fades as we grow older. Eventually, we're expected to bear the normal responsibilities of working a steady job, traditional retirement planning, raising a family, and so on. We quit encouraging people to explore and learn new things way too early in life. At 18 years old, you are expected to know what you want to do for a career when just two years ago, you couldn't even drive yourself to a job. So before we know it, we're slapped with the responsibilities of life and all that room for being creative quickly disappears. Now there's an interesting quote by Paula Poundstone around this subject. And she says, adults are always asking kids what they want to be when they grow up because they themselves are looking for ideas. You can live your life however you want. Anything you can imagine is possible. You just must first imagine that. And this is your vision. Your vision is the big picture. It's the framework for goals and actions. Your vision outlines who you want to be how you want to live your life, and what values you have. Your vision will be your reasons why you wake up every day and pursue your goals. Your vision is what you strive for. Now, the more specific you can make your vision, the better. A vision to simply, quote-unquote, be healthy or be happy isn't enough. Be more specific. Use emotionally charged language about how you will feel. More importantly, write that down. It's okay if you don't know exactly what your vision is just yet. Writing it down will help you turn your thoughts into words and then those words into actions. Your vision will probably change over time too. Think big with your vision. Remember, people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. Look at New Year's resolutions, for example. People set lofty goals only to give up by the time February rolls around. A lot can change in 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, and so on. 5 years ago doesn't seem like that long of a time, right? But think back to five years ago to a point in your life. Look at how much has changed for you since then. I'm sure you've grown, learned, and experienced new things and are capable of much more now. Your interests, hobbies, priorities, 
and responsibilities have probably changed some too. One thing is certain. Whether you changed or not, those five years have passed. And the next five years will pass. As Jim Rome says, it is the set of the sails, not the direction of the wind, that determines which way we will go. You owe it to not only yourself, but the other people in your life to be the best version of you. That's all. Just be the best person you can be. Anything less is wasting your potential, and well, there isn't anything more you can do. So let's talk about living intentionally. Your version serves as a purpose for you to live intentionally. And living intentionally means you make conscious decisions to living your life how you want. As we all know, it can be easy to get caught up in the everyday life, being reactive to the things that come our way. If life is a pinball machine, you can either be the pinball being bounced around or you can be the paddles. Which do you want to be? I'll hit you with another good quote here by Tom Bilio that says, If you don't know exactly who you want to be and what you want to be doing in five years, then you're already doing it. So who will you be in five years? What will you be doing? That answer should align with your vision. Let's look at how you can create your vision and then build some goals to achieve that vision. Step one, first create your vision. Ask yourself these four questions. Who do you want to spend your time with? How do you want to live your life? Who do you want to help? And how will you feel when you are living out that vision? Step two, set 10x goals. This exercise comes from the 10x rule by Grant Cardone. Set goals 10 times more than you think you can achieve. Step three, break those 10x goals down into 10-year, 5-year, 3-year, and 1-year goals. I know this sounds like a lot, but you're really just creating stepping stones to achieve those 10x goals. These intermediate to long-term goals help keep you accountable to yourself. And step four, break your one-year goals down into 12-week goals. Remember, we can't leave ourselves to one-year goals. Remember how successful we tend to be with New Year's resolutions? That's why we need a more frequent reminder of our progress. This 12-week goal is inspired and created by Brian Morin in his book, The 12-Week Year. In the 12-week year, Brian outlines some compelling reasons why breaking down goals and actions into 12-week periods produces better results than operating on a 12-month year. 12 weeks allows you enough time to accomplish large goals, but it is compressed so as to not give you so much time to procrastinate. Let's look at an example. Let's say your goal is to lose 20 pounds. If your goal is to lose 20 pounds this year, Starting January 1st, you know that you have 12 months to accomplish this. You can have that cheeseburger and milkshake in February knowing that you have 10 more months to recover and get back on track. But rather, if your goal is to lose 20 pounds in 12 weeks, that's a little more than 1.5 pounds per week you have to lose. No room for milkshakes there. But Brian goes even further with the 12-week year to outline weekly action plans. You track your leading and lagging measures to understand how you are tracking and then project your results. This is a hyper-focused approach to achieving your goals. Now backing up to our 30,000 foot view and reviewing our 10x goals, let's look at something. Let's say one of your 10x goals is to earn $1 million per year in passive and or business income 10 years from now. Without intermediate and short-term goals, you could easily procrastinate that goal this entire year, making no progress towards it. But that's okay. You still have nine years left, which seems like forever away, right? Well, wrong. If you're not taking steps every day to get you towards that goal, then how do you expect to accomplish such a large feat? Remember, to achieve 10x goals, you have to follow up with massive action. 
So to summarize these steps, start with your vision. This anchors your goals. Then set 10x goals and break those down into 5, 3, 1, and 12-week goals. Now tailor this approach how you want. Maybe you only make 10, 5, and 1-year goals. That's up to you. The more specific you get, though, the more specific you can plan. You can choose to either live the life you want and create for yourself or live the life someone else creates for you. Your vision, your reasons why, and your goals are simply the tools you use to create that life. Your ideal life won't happen accidentally. You'll have to create it. As Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. So what do you want to accomplish in your life? What legacy do you want to leave behind? What do you want to think about when you're old and reflecting on all the things you did and didn't do in life? Spend some time thinking about these things. You'll come up with all sorts of ideas, thoughts, feelings, and you can use those to help start building a life you want now. No matter who you are, where you're at in life, or what you have or haven't accomplished so far, you are capable of creating any life you want. All you have to do is figure out what that is and do it. Well, that wraps up this week's short episode with just you and I. Hey, I hope you're getting value from this podcast and these shows. If you like what you heard, please go over and leave a rating and review on whichever platform you're listening on. As always, for questions, comments, or to reach out to me, feel free to do that at www.jacobairs.com. Till next week, engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have a potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom, LLC, exclusively.